So today I don't have so much of a finished effect tutorial for you guys, but rather a foundation on which I hope we can build something cool. I didn't have that much time to play with it myself, I just came up with this today, but wanted to share this with you nonetheless. So as you can see we have a two objects that have this material that is trying to mimic a light. Uh, as you can see we don't have any light in our scene, but anyway we have this uh, sort of effect as if this empty object was our light source. And it works both with cell shaded stuff as well as with nice and soft gradient as well. But this one is not finished yet, I mean there's still a few kinks that I need to solve, so I'll probably focus on the cell shaded one today. But just for the preview you can set the radius of the light and also the strength of it. And it reacts nicely with the geometry, but like so far the shadows are not working yet. And I'm not sure if it's even possible to make it solely in the material editor. So today we will focus on the cell shaded stuff, where you can control the highlight threshold as well as the shadow threshold, and that's basically it. There is some math behind, but we'll get into it right now. So I get it, this video is probably not for everyone, but I want to start sort of community effort to develop something cool, and maybe this will be a start for that. Who knows? So in a fresh blender scene I will only get the monkey so that we have some object to work with. I will also shade it smooth. You don't need to add the geometry, I think. Uh, when it's low poly like that it looks even better with the cell shaded stuff. I will directly go into the shaded viewport and create a new material. Now as you can probably guess this whole material is based on vectors, so we will need a texture coordinates, two of those. One is gonna be for our empty, which we can actually create right now. So let's search for empty, plane axis, fine. And in the second texture coordinates, in this object field, just click this eyedrop and choose the empty that you created. The next thing that we will need is a vector math node, and we want to set it to distance, because we want to measure the vector between our object and also the empty that we just created. So the first texture coordinates comes from normal, because we want to check it against the normal of the faces of the object, and the second comes from the object, because we want the coordinates of this object in the world space. Now if we preview this distance now, then try to move this empty around, you can see that as we come closer to the mesh, then it becomes a bit darker and then it just shines uh, as we move further away, which makes total sense, so the value is higher the further we are moving away, makes total sense, but we want to clip it so that we don't get ridiculous values. So for that we will need to copy this vector math node and plug it in between the texture coordinate and distance in both texture coordinates and just change it from distance to normalize. And what it does, it basically clamps the values between 0 and 1. So that is the base for our effect and as you move the empty around you can see sort of the thing that's already happening. And also if you have the empty on one side of the mesh and you look on the other you can see that the shadow is exactly on the opposite side of the mesh and also on the ears. So that is great, now we just need to sort of expand on the shadow and create masks that we can use later for the highlights in the shadow. But first of all what we want to do is we want to clamp the value again, because without it, as you can see, the areas closest to the empty have a little bit of sheen, a little bit of bloom. If you have a bloom enabled then you can see it much better. The value of those areas are definitely above 1 because you can see the shine of the mesh. And we can visualize it actually by using a math node. And let's plug it to the distance and change it from add to greater than. And as we preview the greater than, you can see that when the threshold is zero, then the whole mesh is masked in. So every value on this mesh is basically greater than zero. And now when you move the threshold, you can see that when you get to one, you would probably expect that the whole mesh is gonna be black because we have this normalized and it's supposed to clamp the vector from zero to one. But what's actually happening is the gradient that we get from distance is from 0 to 2. And I'm not entirely sure why it's happening. I have enough assumptions, but I'm not sure I should share them, because they may be completely wrong. But the fact is that this gradient is now from 0 to 2, and not from 0 to 1. Which is why we need this map range. So from minimum 0 to maximum 2, we want to clamp it to only output the values from 0 to 1. So let's preview this map range, and as you can see that the bloom, the shininess of the mesh, completely disappeared, so we can be sure that the values are 0 in the darkest place and 1 in the, the brightest. Now the next step would be to separate the highlights and the shadows, and for that we will need a math node connected right after the map range and change it to greater than again, and this will act as a highlight threshold, so basically where you want the, the highlighted area to be. And then one more node below it, 
change it from greater than to less than and this on the other hand is gonna be the threshold but for the shadow values so basically as a mask where should the shadow the darker areas be and then whatever that's not in the shadow or the highlight is simply gonna stay as the middle or let's say the original color of the mesh so now that we have all this let's put this highlight to like 0.9 quite high so only the top of the mesh is gonna be highlighted and then the shadow something like 0.5 maybe so everything that's not directly uh, facing our fake light source and now in order to get this area between them we simply get another math node change it to add so that we add those two masks together and then we invert it to get everything in between so search for invert node and that is gonna be our original color mask and so this setup we can put into a group because having it in group just makes it all look more organized so let's just select all those nodes and click ctrl g to get a groups and now we only want to have few inputs uh, one is gonna be the threshold for the highlight so we can already go into the group and change the name and you can also specify the min and max so that the slider is gonna be easier to operate between zero and one because that's our range and then another input goes into the less than node which is our shadow threshold and similarly the minimum input and maximum can also be at zero and one unfortunately uh it's either impossible or i don't know how to get a group input from the object that we want to use the texture coordinates from we cannot have uh, like the the object input like this this window in the group input or or if you know how to get it then please let me know i would really love to know but one workaround is you just set the group input into the normalize and you just name it light source position and then outside of the group you use the texture coordinates and you plug it in so you're able to set the object from outside of the group so you don't have to enter the group every time because it becomes bothersome so we can delete that for now and then the group output this color we can change it to type float because it's just a grayscale value and we can also name it a original material mask because that is the not highlight and not shadow area basically and then the greater than output goes into the group output as well we can move it down to visualize better what's going on and this greater than is our highlight threshold and also a float and then the less than goes to the third output and it's our shadow highlight i'm sorry shadow threshold all right and with this setup we can exit the group with this arrow right here and you can see that the mesh right now is in total mess because we don't have the light source position but as soon as you mess with this vector you can see you can control it by hand you don't need this empty object this empty object is just for you to make it more comfortable to use so here we will just need a texture coordinates and again the object is gonna be our empty and the object output goes into the light source position and now we are previewing the original material mask so let's check the highlights also and the shadow it's all working exactly as intended and you can uh, change those values in here directly so the last step is basically to give it some colors and to mix them all using those masks so let's start with an rgb input just to keep it simple but you can use any texture or any material that you already have and then we will need a mix rgb and plug this rgb input into one color and then the second input is whatever material you want to have in the highlighted area so let's plug the highlight threshold into the factor and i will make the highlights to be uh, quite bright green and then let's also make our base green but a little bit darker and as we preview this mix rgb you can see that we already have working uh, simple highlights the same goes for shadows you just copy the mix rgb and then the shadows has to be darker much darker so maybe something like this and the factor is gonna be the shadow threshold and voila you should have this result already working and as i said this works as a base as a foundation for whatever creative ideas you may have to build on top of that i mean you could also add way more levels of highlights and shadow you simply have to go into the node group and add more greater than and less than nodes so that you have more levels basically and same as with those you just mix them using the threshold as the factor the last thing to kind of finalize the whole cartoony stylized look is of course uh, the outline so for that we will just use the fresnel node 
and a math node, connect one to another and change it from add to greater than again because we want a harsh line. So here you can control how much of it is going to be affected and another mix RGB like so. The greater than goes into the factor and then the second color is going to be our outline, so completely black. And if you preview it, you can see that we have this cartoony look to our monkey right now. Also one thing to keep in mind when you're rotating the object, then the light rotates with it, because it is based on the normal of the object in the local space. So if you want the light to behave properly again, you have to apply the rotation and then it works fine. So that would be it. I hope you enjoyed. There's a little different format of this video than what you may be used to in my channel and i hope you learned something and if not then at least it was interesting let me know down in the comments and if you manage to do something out of it then please let me know on twitter i'd leave it i'd really love to see whatever you come up with and yeah consider subscribing hang around we're doing cool stuff in here more things to come so i'll see you in the next one bye bye